I am Mohul. I am standing here for ages, and my ancestors, even I couldn't tell for how many years they were present in this area, my area, the Chota Nagpur Plateau, my home. I am standing and waiting. The wind has brought the news. The sky has shown me her reflection. And the rough soil is somehow soft today. The Polans have escorted her last touch. The mountain is showing the silence of sadness. For many years I know people love me. But she who loved me best, behold, she is coming to me today. Coming to be by my side forever. The earth and the water will mingle her body with me in time. I am wretched because she is speechless like me today. She will never sit next to me and talk. Her hair is now white. Her facial skin is wrinkled. But the day I first spoke to her, you could not match her to anything like this. Even today, I can clearly see the day I first saw her. Yes, this is she, Tushumoni Mahato, daughter of a Kurmi tribal couple. Her mother is holding her, and this is the first day she touched me. In the tapestry of my memory, the day she first touched me remains vivid. Can you believe this girl in her lifetime married me twice? Yes, I am a married tree. And I am married to Tushumani. But to know our story, you have to know their history, their civilization, and their religion. The indigenous inhabitants of Chota Nagpur Plateau consists of non-Aryan tribes. The principal of them are Mundas, Kols, Shantals, Asurs, Oraus, Dhangars, Ho, Gond, Kharwar, Chero, Kurmi, Bhumij, Shabor, Birhor, and many others. The civilization started here from the Stone Age. Stone tools and microliths were discovered from the Chotanagpur Plateau region, which are from the Mesolithic period. From the ancient history to modern time, repeatedly this area was neglected by all. Fraction of its rich history has been discovered yet. Thousands years old statues are just kept by villagers. No preservation measures are there. One day, my friend and I were bathing in the river when something touched my foot. Curious, I tried to lift it but it was too heavy. So my friend helped me. We discovered it was a statue of a deity. Realizing its importance, we told the village and many helped us bring it back. We built a temple for it and now it's our goddess. The police came to our village and asked some questions. We know the statue is old but don't know exactly how old. She is our goddess now and we'll protect her no matter what. A rich man offered us a lot of money to buy the statue. But how can anyone sell their god? We have made a team of villagers to guard her. When the term neglect comes, along with comes the name Isko Cave. The Isko Caves are located in a remote village called Isko, about 45 kilometers from Hazaribagh town and 15 kilometers from Barkagao block. The caves are situated in a dense forest area, surrounded by hills and streams. It is considered to be a site of archaeological significance. With evidence of human habitation dating back to the Stone Age, Isko village is famous for its rock paintings, which are said to be of the Mid-Stone Age. Our 
archaeologists excavated the site and found that an ancient civilization used to reside in this area from 250,000 years back. And these paintings are from the Mesochalcolithic period, from 9,000 to 5,000 BCE. While some experts believe these paintings are from the late Stone Age period, from 20,000 to 25,000 BCE. These caves were discovered by Bulu Imam, an environmental activist working for the protection of tribal culture and heritage in Jharkhand in 1991. It is a matter of concern that so far, no effort was made to preserve the rock paintings. Nature is solely preserving these invaluable paintings. Stone tools and microliths were discovered from the Chota Nagpur Plateau region, which are from the Mesolithic period. Flake tools, arrowheads, kelts have been found, which are from the Neolithic period. The use of iron tools, pottery spread in the region during 1400 to 800 BCE, according to carbon dating of iron slag, sickle, and wheel-made pottery, which was found in Burudi of Singhum district. It might be right to call the Chota Nagpur civilization the oldest Indian civilization we know so far. So the Chota Nagpur plateau, which has been overlooked before, could be as old as places like Persia, Mesopotamia, Egypt, and the Indus Valley. Now, we should see this area as part of the earliest Indian civilization and cultures. Henceforth, Chota Nagpur Plateau should be regarded as belonging to the Adi Bharat or proto-Indian group of civilization and culture. The Chota Nagpur Plateau, a region steeped in history and rich in culture, has maintained its presence through the ages, notably in ancient texts like the Rig Veda and the epic Ramayana. In the Rig Veda, the earliest of the Vedas, the Chota Nagpur Plateau, is subtly referenced through the term Muras, which is interpreted as a Sanskritized transformation of Mundas. The Muras are described as ab-original people, indicating the presence of indigenous tribes like the Mundas long before the Vedic period began. Transitioning from the Vedic era to the epic narrative of the Ramayana, the Chota Nagpur Plateau continues to assert its historical and mythological significance. In this ancient epic, the presence of tribes like Bhils, Kols, and Gons is prominently noted, especially in the sections like Ajuddha Kando, Oronno Kando, and Kishkinda Kando. These tribes are depicted as inhabitants of the forests and allies in the saga that unfolds around Lord Rama. The Ramayana's portrayal of these tribes not only highlights their existence, but also respects their role in the larger epic narrative. History always brings the memory back. Toshumoni is now lying under me. Her eyes are closed. She will not look at me ever. But I remember that girl whose childhood to adolescence grew surrounding me. Her play, her joy, her melancholy, her dream, all were with me. I 
I remember the days of Karam festivals. The glow of joy used to become so obvious on her face. Karam is a harvest festival celebrated in this region. Iti iti jawa kia kia jawa jawa lo bhai re dana bahura jawa It's celebrated for good harvest and health. Nine type of seeds planted in baskets such as rice, wheat, corn, etc., which is called java. Girls take care of these seeds for seven to nine days. The Karum festival honors the women who first planted corn and initiated the tradition of farming. Today's agriculture owes much to their efforts. The festival celebrates their contributions, recognizing the crucial role women have played in developing and sustaining our agricultural practices. Through Karam, we express our deep appreciation for these women, the true pioneer of farming. Death has invaded Tushumuni's life. I am widower today. But who can stop the wheel of time? Intruders always come into play when you tell a history. From the ancient times, this Chota Nagpur plateau has been invaded multiple times by intruders. Initially the Aryans, then the Kashyap descendants, the Nagabangshis. The region was predominantly ruled by the Nagabangshis throughout ancient, medieval and modern times. This ruling period is known as Khokra Sheftancy and Chota Nagpur was known as Khokra Desh. During the reign of Raja Madhu Singh, a Nagabangshi king, this plateau was invaded by Emperor Akbar, the third Mughal emperor. In this time period, another powerful person entered this land. But not for power or money, but for love. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu He was passing by the forest Jharikhan. On the way, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu reached Bundu near Ranchi and took rest under the banyan tree and took path in the Ranichua pond. This pond and banyan tree is still present and a beautiful Radharani temple is built near the banyan tree. After Bundu, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to Choron Pahari, near Kuju, Ramgod district, 40 kilometers from Rachi in Jharkhand, and did Mahashankirtan in the dense forest. It's a folk fantasy story that the local tribes did Hare Krishna Mahamantra Kirtan in ecstasy, and all the animals of dense forest gathered there participated in the Kirtan and got purified. Due to its diamonds, Chota Nagpur was also known as Hira Nagpur and its Raja Durjan Sal, being an expert of diamonds, was known as Hira Raja among the people. 
thus to subdue the Raja of Chota Nagpur and to acquire valuable diamonds, Jahangir decided to invade Chota Nagpur. On getting orders from the Emperor, Ibrahim Khan marched against Kokhra in 1615 AD. Nagbangshi king Raja Durjan Shal was taken to prison in Agra for withdrawal of tribute to Mughals. During his imprisonment, an intriguing incident unfolded. The Mughal court was evaluating diamonds from the Sankha riverbed in Chota Nagpur, but encountered confusion regarding the purity of two diamonds. To resolve this, Durjan Shal was asked to assess them. He ingeniously tied each diamond to a ram's horn and led the ram's battle. The flawed diamond shattered while the pure one remained intact. Showcasing Durjan Shal's adeptness, impressed by his skills, Jahangir released him. I remember an interesting chapter in history that underscores the relentless cycle of dynastic rule and colonial struggles. The Mughal dynasty, like all others, met its end, a fate determined by the Battle of Boxer. When the East India Company started collecting revenues in the Chotanagpur region, the local Bhumiji tribe fiercely resisted. Near a century before India's first war of independence, the tribal people of Chotanagpur declared India's first revolt against British colonial rule, the first ever revolt in India. The resistance quickly escalated in the Chuar Rebellion in 1769. Named after the term Chuar, which means wicked in the local dialect, this rebellion marked the beginning of a series of tribal uprisings against British rule. Almost a century before India's first war of independence in 1857. The earliest of these was led by Tilka Manji, a brave Santal leader in 1771, who fought to reclaim ancestral lands from exploitative landlords and the British. Following Tilka's revolt, several tribes including the Bhumis of Manbhum, the Chero of Palamu, the Oraus of Gumla, the Munda of Tamar, the Ho of Singhum, and the Santals took up arms in subsequent upsprings. Notable among the Santal leaders were Sidho and Kanho, who became legends for their resistance. The most celebrated of these tribal heroes was Birsa Munda. Munda's efforts peaked at the turn of the 20th century. Despite his short life of only 25 years, Birsa Munda became a pivotal figure in rallying his tribes against British control and exploitative middlemen. Caught under dubious circumstances and dying mysteriously in Ranchi jail in 1900, his movement initially forced the colonial government to enact laws protecting tribal land. His legacy continued to inspire, highlighting the tribal capacity to resist oppression and maintain their cultural identity. The rulers changed with times. The maps were changed constantly. The areas were divided and reunited again and again. But the Chota Nagpur Plateau 
remained the same with its unique geography, its own rich history and culture, and the most important, the Aboriginal people of this area. Tushumoni is now a woman. Love in their life is as simple as nature. And one day she said, I am marrying you, Mohol. I never forgot that day. The joy I felt can't be expressed by words. I knew forests and trees remained God to many of these tribes. But marrying a tree, the most sacred bond of love, that time I first realized, though they are labeled as tribes, but they are the most civilized ones, who can understand without tree, life can't go on. But love and marriage, the two most intimate emotions that is also offered to a tree, who can think that? Among the few customs of the Aboriginal society of Chota Nagpur Pretu, which are older than the Vedic period and which have not been lost yet, is their unique marriage customs. But the main attraction of this marriage is that before men and women marry each other, they first marry a tree. Men do Ambiha, mango tree marriage, and women Muhulbiha, Mudhuka tree marriage. Only after marrying a tree and going to protect it from life, the couple is allowed to marry each other. When civilized urban society has to legislate to protect trees, one wonders 
how many thousands of years ago this tribal population felt the importance of trees just as men and women take responsibility to protect each other by getting married by marrying a tree this tribal society pledges to love nature and protect it for life the beautiful jhumur song is sung as no priests are present in the marriage no mantra is chanted this folk music is known as jhumer or jhumur music in current language according to folk culture researcher dr ashutosh bhattacharya jhumur is the basic foundation of folk music of western border of bengal jhumur is the indigenous music that is prevalent from chota nagpur across central india to the border of gujarat some researchers have found a close resemblance of this jhumur to the ancient chorja padu which is of the thousands of years even their religion is based on trees sarnism is a religious faith of the indian subcontinent predominantly followed by indigenous communities in the chota nagpur plateau region other religions like hinduism jainism buddhism and in later part christianity have tried to influence our religion for ages only jainism was widely accepted in this area as we get numerous jain temples and sculptures the mixed hindu and jain cultures are also seen a lot the two major philosophies of jainism one doesn't have any caste no does it believe in caste system and two not harming others life these two philosophies attracted the tribes to jainism the tribe religion helped to nourish jainism before enlightenment buddha spent 6 years in the chota nagpur plateau We don't know exactly what happened and how he spent his days but we can make some guesses He traveled across the villages of the aboriginal people observing their customs and society He must have built this philosophy on that experience It was foundation of his enlightenment It was bodhi with all their rituals I married to Shumuni. From Mohul, I became a married tree. The couple used to come to me. They were so happy. Their happiness touched me. I was full with joy. but with time all happiness comes to an end one day tushumoni's partner went to the city for work she cried a lot to me i had no words to console her the dense forest which brings all the necessary things to life for them now faded due to civilization so they now go to the city for income and sometimes mishap happens tushumoni's partner was lost forever in the trap of civilization bandho je de le raja ho When the news came, Tushumoni came to me again, all alone. 
the days go on the struggle of life continues bandh ho je de le raja ho कोईते आवे सीरे के गोरिया रे मौल कोईते आवे पोनी हो and one day a new marriage is arranged by the elders of the village for tushuman much more can be learned from the marriage customs of this tribal society ishwar chandra vidyasagar had to fight with the whole society to enact a law to introduce widow marriage and the widow marriage has been prevalent in this simple tribal society since that early time and again before the second marriage tushumoni married me today tushumoni's physical life comes to an end and her physical body is buried beneath my soil as her last wish Though her physical body comes to an end her memories her stories her soul will remain with me for a long time and my flowers will bloom every year to tell you her story I sometimes wonder how those people could understand our importance from such ancient times they sometimes made us their god sometimes their friends and sometimes their loved ones they every time fought against huge power whenever we were destroyed in the name of civilization today their existence is in danger the evils of the civilization has infiltrated their society but the bones are far away i am mohul today i became a widower tushumoni is now lying beneath me today i will not remember the bitter memories i want you to remember our love i want you to spread the news of this unique culture of tree marriage i want you to save this unique aboriginal people If they are saved we will be saved and if we are safe civilization is safe so like tushumoni don't save a tree rather love a tree